What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Shepherding Peppers Farm. If you're new, I'm Natasha. And if you're not, well, then you already know why we're here. We are continuing the great what are we growing in the garden and why conversation series. And today is peppers. So I am very excited. It's a really good day to be filming because it is monstrously pouring outside. We are in the middle of a massive storm. We actually have a tornado watch going on right now. Not a tornado siding in the area or anything, but moving on. So we're talking about peppers today, which is my absolute favorite thing in the world to talk about. Some people love tomatoes. They want to try all the different types of tomatoes. They want to grow all the different varieties. Well, for me, that is peppers. I want to grow all the different types of peppers and try them all. So today we're going to be talking about some of the ones that we are growing in the garden this year. I have a stack of peppers pushed off to the side, which I don't think I'll get to today. So in the future, if you see um, pepper varieties in the garden tours that I didn't mention in this video, that's because we grow a lot of peppers and a lot of different types of peppers. If I end up having time to talk about all the peppers, I will add those in. If not, I definitely wanted to cover these ones that I have right in front of me. So we're gonna get started with the sweet peppers and then we'll move on to the spicy peppers and why we're growing them, what we're using them for, all the good things. All right. So we're going to talk about some tried and true things that we have grown in the past and absolutely loved. And one of them is the Ash County pimento pepper. Now this is a pepper that is typically used when making pimento cheese. So if pimento cheese is your jam. This is a great option because it is a sweet bell pepper type variety that is used for exactly that purpose. They were extremely prolific in the garden this last year. They produced really early. They produced really good sized fruits. I've seen a lot of photos of Ash County pimento peppers where the plants are extremely small and the peppers are extremely small, but the variety that I ended up growing and the seeds that I got were quite large. They rivaled a small bell pepper-esque is what I would say. They weren't your California Wonder Bells, which can get a decent size, but they were a good size bell pepper. So you can grow Ash County pimento peppers for the purpose of having a fresh sweet red bell pepper to eat and enjoy, or you can grow them for the purpose of making pimento cheese. They're just a really good bell pepper option that grows wonderfully here in the Southeast in the humidity and heat because it was bred in Ash County, North Carolina, which is a state above us. All right, up next we have elephant ear peppers. Now, before I get into the explanation of why I'm so excited about the elephant ear peppers, I wanna back up and talk about seed companies just really quickly. So a lot of seed companies that we've used in the past and had good results with include um, Baker Creek, Botanical Interest, Swallowtail Gardens. I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head. So right, Seeds, Gardener Basics. There's a lot of really good seed companies out there. Well, I found a new seed company that specializes in peppers this year called Refining Fire Chilies. Yeah, I, I've been like a kid in a candy store. They have so many different varieties of unique and rare peppers and chilies that it's been hard to not buy them all. <laughs> so I had to limit it to what my absolute favorites are, both in sweet peppers and in spicy peppers, and one of them being the elephant ear pepper. So this is an absolutely enormous pepper. This is a bell pepper variety that is sweet and gets to be about six inches long and four inches wide. It's slightly flattened on the surface so it resembles, as you would guess, an elephant ear. So I'm really excited to grow it because it's a massively big bell pepper. Also a famous pepper in Serbia because it is used to make this really amazing pepper um, sauce that they use in a lot of dishes over there. And so when I'm chopping for peppers or tomatoes or other plants to put in the garden for the next year, I often think about what I'm going to want to use it for. Although I would like to just grow everything to grow everything, I also want it to be purposeful. I want there to be a reason that I'm growing that specific variety. Well, peppers like the elephant ear pepper has so many different uses. You can go ahead and you can eat it as a fresh snacking pepper. I'm sure it'll cook well. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't say for sure. But if its reviews say anything, it should hold up well to cooking. It's great for that sauce. I'm going to put the name of it in the description of the video for you. And it's also used to make non-spicy paprika powder. That's exciting because I really, really love to fill up my pantry in all aspects when it comes to peppers. I like to can them and pickle them. I like to dehydrate them and preserve them into different spices and seasonings. And I like to have them in the freezer to use to cook with all throughout the winter. So these are a really great all-purpose pepper since you have the different varieties of things you can do with them. I believe you receipts here. 
All right, if we're gonna continue on the big peppers that are sweet, we have monster yellow bell peppers. Now this is another really big variety of bell pepper. This is a bell pepper that ripens to a yellow color and it, it gets its name for being a monster yellow bell pepper because it can be eight inches long and four inches wide. So this is a really big bell pepper. I like to grow large fruits and vegetables because we have a very large family. There are seven people in my household and we eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. We also cook with a lot of fruits and vegetables and we preserve pretty much everything we can. So from that standpoint, it benefits us more to grow bigger varieties of food because they will feed more people. And bell peppers are something that are loved by the kids and by me and my husband. And so I'm really excited about these monster yellow bell peppers. I'm sure some of you have probably grown these before. They've been around for a while. This will be my first year growing monster yellow bell peppers. So I'm excited about that. Then you have California Wonder Bells. This is your standard bell pepper. This is what you're gonna find in the grocery store most of the time is your Wonder Bell Peppers. They've grown really well for us here. They do okay in the heat and humidity. They produce great just about every season. So we've never had an issue with Wonder Bells and they have a variety of uses. Pretty much anything you can think of for a bell pepper, you can do with a Wonder Bell Pepper. So those are a tried and true. Plus, if you save seeds from the fruits and vegetables in your own garden, each year, those seeds that you save get acclimated somewhat to your environment. So by now, we have saved seeds for these Wonder Bell peppers for years and years. And because of that, these seeds have proven to be more prolific and resilient. So if you have the ability to save seeds in your own garden, this is something that I highly recommend doing. I do make an effort to save my seed packets. So that way, when I'm saving seeds later on, I have the same packet in front of me because I am very visual. I like to see what the plants are and certain seed companies don't put photos on them like Baker Creek does. And so I'll print out little photos and put them in there just because it helps me when I'm planning things. All right, up next we have the Saraga Giant Sweet Chocolate Pepper. This is a huge pepper. It gets to be about two inches wide and over a foot long. It is supposed to be very sweet and complex in its flavor. I'm really excited to try this. This will be a new variety for us this year. And apparently they are supposed to produce fruits and banana sized bunches, whereas bananas all grow together. They're supposed to do something similar. So that should be really fun. All right, miniature rainbow bell peppers. So again, you can see I have a little photo over here and then the seeds that we've saved. I love growing mini baby bell peppers because of the fact that these plants have been so prolific, it doesn't feel like a waste. They're, they're small fruits, but the plants have been between three to four feet tall and just produced bushels and bushels of fruit. And the kids really enjoy a little mini bell pepper to snack on, especially if they're red or orange, they really enjoy those. And you can stuff them with cream cheese. They're really, really good. And they've just done really well in our garden year after year. So I will pretty much always grow mini baby bell peppers. Now what I will say about these seeds is these were saved from a grocery store bag of rainbow bell peppers, the small ones. And when, we, when I planted them for the first time, I didn't know what to expect, how tall they were gonna be, and these just turned out to be monstrous plants. Really, really awesome. Up next, we have habanadas. So a habanada is a not hot habanero pepper, which is great because habaneros have a really, really sweet flavoring to them, which you wouldn't find in even your standard mini bell pepper. Now, when peppers ripen from their green color to a red color or yellow, if that's what they ripen to, they do get sweeter as they ripen. But habaneros have a fruity tone to them that you're just not going to get with traditional bell peppers. So something like this, although it's small, you're going to get that same sweet, wonderful flavor that you would get from a habanero without that burning, vicious heat that makes you want to just cry. So I'm really excited to grow these. We have grown these in the past. <laughs> Last year in the garden tours, I took a bite of what I thought was a habanada. It was green, so it didn't, you know, make me die or anything. Thankfully, it wasn't red when I tried it, but it turned out to actually be a habanero, and it was hot. So <laughs> you just want to make sure you label those plants really well. All right, I think we're going to talk about seasoning peppers next. Some... Some seasoning peppers don't carry a ton of heat. And so I have a couple of different varieties in front of me that are more of your seasoning type peppers that are not super hot. Now things like your cayenne, it makes cayenne powder if you dehydrate it and then puree it, which is hot. <laughs> but cayennes have a lot of other uses in our house than just cayenne powder, although we do use it for that. So I'm gonna kind of work my way towards the hotter peppers 
not going to be in order though, so don't anticipate that. So up next is the Aros Campolo pepper. Now this is a Cuban seasoning pepper. Got seeds from Baker Creek. They do look like a habanero, but you remove the seeds, they have no heat to them. And only a couple peppers is all that it takes to really season up a dish. So they're great for that purpose. And seasoning peppers just have a different flavor to them than your bell peppers or your cayennes. There's something very distinct and aromatic about a seasoning pepper. So seasoning peppers can be used fresh. You can also freeze them, but the most common way that they're preserved is to dehydrate them and to powder them or turn them into sauce. So continuing on in that line, we have sweet habaneros. Sweet habaneros have that same really delicious sweet habanero flavor with only a fraction of the heat to them, which is really important if you're wanting to get those citrusy overtones in say a salsa but you don't want your mouth to be on fire. Some people don't like a lot of heat. Our family enjoys a good bit of heat. We make habanero peach jelly and all sorts of really amazing hot sauces. So we like a lot of heat, but some people aren't really big on that front. So something like a sweet habanero is a great option if you want a little bit of heat and a lot of fruity flavor. All right, up next we have the Tobago seasoning pepper. So this again is a new variety for us this year. This is often the seasoning pepper that you're gonna find in jerk chicken. So I'm really excited because jerk chicken is a wonderful Caribbean dish that I would love to be able to make and have that seasoning on hand in our pantry. All right, so another really great pepper that you're gonna get a seasoning pepper from is the Granada pepper. The Granada seasoning pepper, it looks a lot like a habanero, but it is not supposed to have that same heat level to it. It's supposed to be very, very citrusy and fruity in flavor. So I think that using these peppers to make non-spicy sauces that you could put on dishes would be really, really fun. It would be a really exciting way to make sauces that we could use throughout the year and bottle and preserve. And we've talked about selling hot sauce and other little things like that. So it would just be really, really, really fun to be able to experiment with some of these seasoning peppers in the kitchen. And knowing me, I'll probably just eat some of them too. <laughs> Okay, so I skipped over this pepper, but I wanted to mention it. This is a blot pepper. So this is a Russian pepper. It doesn't have any heat to it. It's this beautiful burnt orange color that is supposed to be very, very crunchy and very, very flavorful. So we're really excited to try that one this year. That's gonna be really good. Now, let's talk about, oh, there's one more pepper I wanna mention. I have it in my not to mention pot, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Fuzzy sweet peppers. These are a Ukrainian type of pepper that is clouded as being the sweetest pepper in the world. And what I will say is I, I can't attest to it being the sweetest pepper in the entire world, but we grew this last year and when it ripens to a red color, it is an exceptionally sweet red pepper. This is very, very good. We can eat red peppers in our household the way that some people eat apples. I love them. The kids really love them. The first red pepper of the year gets bickered over to no end until it's divided up into like six different miniature slices. Everybody gets really excited. Well, the Lesia sweet peppers are very, very sweet. So if you're looking for a really good sweet type of pepper that's bell pepper, this is really good. All right, so let's talk about some of these hot peppers. So the first that I'm going to cover is the serrano pepper. A serrano pepper has a pretty decent amount of heat to it, but, but it's our favorite pepper that we use for kind of fresh eating. Now, I'm not saying anybody's really biting into serrano peppers, but we like to use serrano peppers and jalapenos in our fire cider. During the growing season, we will cut up serrano peppers and have them on hand in the refrigerator. And we'll put them on top of pizza and baked potatoes, sometimes mac and cheese. They are spicy, but they are very, very good. So serrano peppers are used a lot in our house, plus they make a really good sauce, and they're really, really good in a lot of cooked dishes. So they add a great level of heat. So this is one that I'm really excited about. It's called red pepper. It is a Chernobyl jalapeno. <laughs> so this is a new variety of jalapeno for us this year. It's massive. This is a jalapeno that is supposed to be able to get up to 12 inches long which is fantastic. That's a 12 inch long jalapeno. That's a big jalapeno. That's a really big jalapeno. Yeah. Now something that we really like to make and we look forward to every single year is stuffed jalapenos with cream cheese and bacon. Oh my gosh, they're so good. They get eaten like 
that. They're gone. They're fantastic. And so something like this can make a lot of stuffed jalapenos. However, it's not as hot as your traditional jalapeno. It's, it's definitely a lower heat level jalapeno. So. Delicious. Delicious. Should we continue with jalapenos or just sporadically move around? You mean as far as ex explanation was? Yeah. 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 Let's run, yeah. run through the pinos. He's very organized. Run through that. He's my he's my anchor. He Jalapenos. keeps me grounded because I'm very special. You okay? Okay. <laughs> Up next is the Megatron jalapeno. So typically in the past we've used Calvin Johnson. What? Megatron. What? Sorry. Let's go on. What? That's a football thing. Oh. Did he play for Michigan? Uh -huh. Then it doesn't matter. All right. So, <laughs> so typically every year we grow Craig's Grande Jalapenos. They're supposed to be a very big variety of jalapeno. Now, what I will say is although they are prolific, they haven't been super big. That's true. They do get bigger as the season goes on. And because I'm me and I have no self-control, we will be growing them again. I'm also overwintering some peppers in the garage. True. We'll have to kicks wait. Until, yeah, we'll have to wait until the season kicks off and just see how those overwintered peppers do. So we will grow a couple of these, but these are Megatron jalapenos. These are from Botanical Interest, and these are supposed to be up to four and a half inches long, making them great for stuffing, baking, or grilling. That sounds good. It does. And mm -hmm. we have a lot of uses for jalapenos. We pickle jalapenos. You can make jalapeno powder out of them, stuffed jalapenos. Up next is the orange spice jalapeno. It's another jalapeno. It's another jalapeno and it is orange. It, it ripens to a really beautiful orange color. So it's supposed to have pretty citrusy overtones in it. Mm. And it's supposed to do well in hot, dry climate. So we did grow this last year. We didn't get a ton of them. I'm hoping this year will be more, more prolific. I think we got a handful of these off of the mm. plants and that was it. So, all right. We are going to grow like one of these plants again. One. Oh, it's the Lutz shower paprika. I, yeah. This this is supposed to be a spicy version of a paprika plant, which is great because spicy paprika powder, that's delicious. And that was the intended purpose that we got this pepper for. It was very prolific. It produced very, very well. And it was not mild in any way, shape, or form. Like, these were exceptionally hot. Uncomfortably hot. I don't know... Why? Um, I mean, because sometimes, you know, Seth will just take a bite out of a serrano pepper when he's feeling crazy in our house, and these were equally as hot. Like, they were bananas. And these are not supposed to get above, I think, 2,500 Colville's, which is the same range of a low-level jalapeno. These are not supposed to be very spicy. And these little suckers were hot. So we will grow a plant again next year because you can always make hot sauce out of it or do other things with it but they were hot so leave it to the hungarian yes the hungarian pepper okay so this is one that i'm really excited about go ahead say it ahi charapita okay this is supposedly the most expensive pepper in the entire world Ooh. It has the same heat level roughly as a cayenne pepper. They're super teeny tiny little fruits. And because of that, they can be somewhat more strenuous to harvest. But they are used in a lot of gourmet cooking and they do have the same heat level as a cayenne pepper. They're supposed to be very, very delicious. They're from Peru and I am so excited to grow them this year. Ooh, a fruity citrus aroma. Mm-hmm. Equal heat to a cayenne. See, now picture a fruity cayenne pepper. Cayennes are not fruity, they're just hot. Makes it, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to smell the citrus. <laughs> it's a scratch and sniff. <laughs> it looks interesting. It does, and they're, they're, they're super small. I'm really excited about these ones a lot. Okay, this is my favorite pepper. Yes, the Sugar Rush Peach Pepper. Yes. This has a heat level of, I think it's 50,000 Scoville's, which is a hot, normal cayenne heat up to 100,000 Scoville's, which is the same as a low-level habanero. Mm. These peppers have the most delicious peach flavor to them. I love them. I often will walk through the garden and take one and start eating it and then regret the decision because they are hot. And you can get like an inch down in the pepper before you're just dying of, of heat, but they make the most amazing hot sauce. Mm. And they're so That's a fact. good. I will always grow these. 
Is that it, there's something unique about the peach flavor. flavor. And what I can tell you is these are the one peppers that are overwintering the best so far. Knock on wood. <laughs> They're doing really good. Yeah, Love them. Look forward to that. Love these. Love this. Yeah. Okay, this is exciting. A bikino? Yes. This is a white pepper. This is a teeny tiny little white pepper, which who in the world has seen an actual white pepper? So I'm really, really excited oh, to grow this. That's an onion. It's not an onion. Hey, look at that. I, it does, though. It does like kind of look like an onion, but I'm really, really, really excited about it. They're sometimes called sweetie drops. They are a mild to moderate heat level. They start out green. I'm looking at my notes because this is a new variety for us. They start out green and then ripen to a pearl white. They are from Denmark and they have citrusy flavor tones. The plants grow to about three feet tall. I'm excited. That's a white pepper. Okay, grab one. Because there's no sunshine in Denmark. Hey, <laughs> those are the neighbors of my people. <laughs> what is this? And that is a oh. Venezuelan tiger pepper. So the Venezuelan tiger pepper is supposed to be very, very rare. The peppers get to about the size of a small hand grenade and supposedly they have an extremely sweet flavor that is like no other. Okay, you just said a small hand grenade? That's what it says, like <laughs> a small hand grenade. Uh, well, if you, if you have a small hand grenade, <laughs> uh, I guess that's as big as it is. Okay, really though. That's an interesting description. It is. <laughs> Let's talk about the large cayennes. Large cayennes. So we also have other varieties of cayennes. We have the long thin cayennes. Now the reason I like these cayennes is they are much thicker, much longer, much meatier, and so you can make a lot more hot sauce. And our children's favorite reigning hot sauce is a duplicate recipe of Frank's hot sauce. But you do have to kind of isolate it to just the cayenne peppers when you're making the hot sauce. And so you need a good bit of them. So the long, thick cayennes are the best to do that with. Okay, so you have more, more meat. Mm-hmm. Now go ahead. I know this is one of your favorites. Oh, yes. The bueno mulata. Which is like... It's purple. Yeah. That's cool. It's like a purple cayenne. It I really like is. like it because it's neat. Mm-hmm. It does ripen to a red color, but it starts out purple, and it is the same heat level as a cayenne. So it's a novelty. But it's pretty in the garden. Yeah, really pretty. Talk about poblanos. Yes, let's talk about poblanos. poblanos. Um, oh, that's one of what Bobby Flay's things, right? Yeah, poblano yeah. peppers. He loves those peppers. Um, but yeah, so poblanos. I mean, they're they're, they're a decent sized pepper. Mm -hmm. Got good meat on them. If you allow them to dry, so if you harvest them when they're unripened, and then you allow them to dry out, you dehydrate them. You can blend the powder up and make. Ancho? Ancho powder. Ancho powder. <laughs> <laughs> Which is used in a lot of Mexican cuisine. Yeah. They make a good um, stuffed bell pepper with like a little bit more heat. Put it on the grill. Mm. I bet you could do a lot of that. Yum. Because it's big enough to oh, yeah. do stuff with like that one. The Big Jim. Big Jims. So these are pretty monstrous sized peppers. They can get up to 12 inches and they have a heat level of a very low jalapeno. So if you are looking to make canned dice green chilies that are hot, these are the pepper that I would recommend. I think they're really good for that purpose. They also are a really good stuffing pepper. So again, back to the whole jalapenos with cream cheese thing. We really love those. Yeah. For somebody like Sophia, this is a good option because it's not really as hot as a jalapeno. And so she can enjoy it, and there's a lot of meat to it. Hmm. What? I didn't know they were part of a pepper breeding project in New Mexico State University. I did not know that either. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay, so Fresnos. Fresno chili peppers, they produced so wonderfully in the garden last year, even though they got a super late start. Fresnos are great because they range anywhere from 2,500 school bills up to 10,000 school bills, which is roughly a mild jalapeno up to a serrano pepper. And they have a fruity flavor that you typically wouldn't find in your jalapenos or your serrano peppers. Typically the fruity flavors that you find are in things like habaneros or detail peppers. And you get that from a Fresno without it being super hot. So they make a really good sweet chili sauce. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Sweet chili. Yep. Ooh, I get some powder. Mm -hmm. And then put it on some like chips. Yeah. So ahi panka? Yes. I'm really excited about this because if you look up the recipe online to make 
Taco Bell's Diablo sauce, which we love. Uh -huh. We don't eat a lot of Taco Bell. When we do, we eat it with so much Diablo sauce. At least I do. I have so much of that stuff. So good. One of the key things that they talk about is Anka paste. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to grow it and make it because we make our own version of Taco Bell sauce and um, Taco Bell's Diablo sauce with store-bought Anka paste and Panka. Anka? I don't know. I don't know if it's Panka or Panka. Panka. Anyway, ahi. 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 Anyway, ahi. these are the peppers that you would grow to do that. Maybe I should do a video on how to make the homemade Taco Bell sauce. It's really good. Mm, that would be fun. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? We got the ahi pineapple. Yep. That's been, <laughs> that was pretty easy. The ahi pineapple. This is another ahi pepper. They have about the same heat level as a cayenne. And this is supposed to have a really good pineapple flavor to it. So I'm excited to try it. And it, and it turns to look kind of like a pineapple's inner. This is true. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's kind of like an inner, inner workings of a pineapple. Absolutely. So these are guajillo, right? Guajillo mole Gua peppers. Guajillo. 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 Guajillo mole peppers. Guajillo. And Guajillo. they're used to make mole sauce and sometimes used in adobo sauce. So... That is my intended reason for growing them. Abubu. You either pronounce it datil. Datil. Or you say it's a dottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dottle pepper. <laughs> You're a dottle pepper. <laughs> okay. I was going to take a drink of this and then you made me laugh. Okay. Datil peppers, I have to say, were probably one of the most prolific peppers in the garden last year. The plants were pretty big, about three feet tall. And then they were really beautiful. I haven't grown a pepper that has grown quite like a detail because it grew in a single stem and then it branched out at the top and almost formed this canopy of peppers. They have a mild citrus flavor, a pretty vicious heat, about a low level habanero type of heat. So you can use them pretty much in any of the ways that you would use a habanero pepper. And that is our wrap up pepper. Yeah, really though. Right, our wrap up of the hot peppers. Yeah, habanero pepper is about 100,000 Scoville's to 300,000 Scoville's, and they're very fruity and very, very hot. We use habaneros to make things like peach habanero jelly. Peach habanero jelly, and we use it. We will add a couple into hot sauces and things like that. Yeah. I really want to try making a mango habanero salsa next year with the detail peppers because it would be complimentary in color. I know, it sounds I was going to say, the habanero jelly was kind of like uh Amazingness? Yeah. It was so good. It was really good. It was really good. I can link for you guys in the description of the video, uh, a video for making the habanero jelly. It was really, really good. So habaneros are great. You only need a couple of plants because they are extremely prolific. A little bit goes a long way. And because... And it's worth it. It's so worth it. Because the video is now up to almost 45 minutes and I have to edit it down, I think we're going to wrap it up. So not including... Aren't you going to wrap it? Aren't you going to wrap it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Burn Notice fan out there, <laughs> it's from, it's from um, Spoofs or... Is that what they call it? Spoofs? <laughs> I don't think you call it Spoofs. What do you call it? Bloopers! <laughs> it's bloopers. It's from bloopers it's from the, Burn Notice. It's a spoof for real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So those are some of the peppers that you'll be seeing in the garden this coming year. It is January right now, and I am starting my pepper seeds. I'm starting them in the house. They are the only seeds that get started in the house because they're spoiled in that way. I am starting them now because I like them to be very substantial in size before I put them out to the garden, and I can plant out roughly around the beginning of April. Typically, we we watch the weather pretty closely through the first week of April and then kind of decide yeah. we're going to put it out. Technically, our last frost date is the middle to end of March, and we almost always, like clockwork, get a late freeze. One, uh, one in April. That comes. Either the first, second yeah. week, typically. But. For sure. So these peppers, with any luck, will be two to three months old by the time we'll be putting them outside, which you would think would be pretty substantial, but peppers are actually very, very slow going. And so they'll be six to eight inches tall. They probably won't be much bigger than that. But oftentimes with your peppers too, germination takes a little while. 
So if you are starting your peppers and you're finding that you're on week eight and you haven't seen your seeds germinate, they're still working on it. Give it some time. Give yourself at least 11 weeks and then count it as loss if you don't see anything after that. But a lot of pepper varieties can take eight to 10 weeks to sprout. Procrastinators. I do have pepper babies up there though. You were outside or you were doing something this morning and I saw that the peppers had sprouted and I was like, happy birthday. And I went over there and the kids were like, mom, you're so weird. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> I was all excited. Um, the happy ones that have ever. sprouted the quickest have been those Megatron jalapenos. I'm telling you, I got to show you Megatron. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out that. Megatron number one is a okay. fictional character, but number two. I was gonna say that's the that's in the car movie. That is not in football. Uh, 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 but look, Megatron. <laughs> Megatron. His name was Calvin Johnson, mm -hmm. and he was nicknamed Megatron because he's a huge dude. He was played wide receiver. He's six foot five. Wow. Nicknamed Megatron. See that? Yeah. Boom! Right there. What? Why? Because Megatron's huge. Megatron. Anyway, so that was his Perfect. nickname. Perfect. So. If by any chance a football player is watching, there's a pepper named after you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the right <laughs> That's probably not how it came about, but nevertheless. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye. Well, get in here. Come over here. Say bye. 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 bye.